All right, we are back with another episode of the Kevin and Fred show. And today I am joined by Jill Butler out of uh, St. Louis, Missouri. How are you doing today, Jill? Doing great. Thanks. Awesome. Well, hey, I'm so glad that we get to have this conversation uh, today and uh, learn a little bit about you and your business and and your brokerage and kind of things. So much has changed right in the last year. And I know you've adapted quite well. And so I'm, I'm excited to talk about that. But I was, you know, where I'd like to start because I, I just tend to, to like do this, you know, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like how long have you been in real estate and sort of what led you there? Because uh, that's something that's always interesting to me is how we find our way into real estate. Yeah, no, so I've been in almost 20 years, hard to believe, but um, it's gone by pretty fast. And before my background was in um, advertising and marketing. And um, I loved those jobs and those positions. And to be honest, I, when I had kids, I decided, okay, I want a little bit more control over my schedule. And I know sometimes we think, hey, real estate can go all the time, but at the same time, you can be home working. You know, my kids, when they were little, had to go preview houses with me all the time. So it was a great parent job. That's awesome. Yeah. So what, and then obviously you, so for, to stay in it for 20 years, you, you, you clearly have decided that you really like it. Um, tell me about the progression of, of your career. I mean, when, at what point did you decide, Hey, I'm really going to, I'm really going to dive in and, and, you know, make this business even bigger. Was there like a turning point for you or, um, you know, what did that, what was that like? So I started and, um, I worked in kind of more boutique luxury brokerages as an agent. Um, I worked for the Sotheby's here in St. Louis, loved it. And I loved building relationships and helping my clients. And, um, after, you know, many years doing that, then I joined Keller Williams. And part of it was I liked a lot of the training they were doing. After I went there as an agent, they asked me to become team leader. And I was very resistant because I loved what I was doing. I loved the client contact, um, but kind of looked at it and thought, okay, I'm going to try this. And in a weird way, it was sort of similar because I'm building a community. I'm helping agents, helping them grow their business. So it's funny. I didn't really think it would translate, but I ended up in that position as well. That's awesome. After doing that for four years, um, just was no longer a fit. Things, you know, everybody kind of changes. And I really believe what's super important is being in alignment with your core values. Um, Because we can do anything. We can do hard things. We can do if we have sort of a sense of purpose. So I just knew it wasn't a fit for me anymore. Um, And then it was just a question of, okay, do I go? I loved being, you know, a manager, a developer, a builder, whatever, helping people like, you know, coaching them and developing their businesses. So I thought, because again, okay, my kids were getting older and it was staring me in the face, like I have to pay for college. So I should go start my own thing. Am I crazy? But I did a few interviews and then decided, okay, I'm going to try this because I always think, um, you know, we have those deathbed decisions on your deathbed. Are you going to wish you would have done it? And I'm like, okay, I will try it. If it crashes and burns, you know, I'll go be an agent or I will get a job as a sales manager for, you know, a brokerage. So it was eight years ago um, and just kind of a leap of faith decided. And part of it was, you know, there's so many great companies and great models out there, but each place I talked to, it wasn't quite what I would want to do. So I'm like, okay, you know, if I could create a perfect world for what I want to do, what would it look like? I think a lot of entrepreneurs do that. Like you're trying to kind of recreate reality in the way you want to operate sure. the way you see it. So we started in a hotel room. Um, and part of it was, I just did not want to do this. Like I'm going to start and work out of my basement. I just thought, okay, if we're going to do this, we've got to be very focused and really do it. And there, um, I knew an area of town I wanted to be in, but I didn't have the space yet. And there's a restaurant that had just rented a space at the Hilton, Frontenac Hilton. And they'd done their interviewing out of that space. Like that's where people would go and interview and, you know, where they'd meet before they opened the restaurant. Well, they had just moved out. So I'm like, let's go check it out. So we rented this little suite at the Hilton. And um, it was so funny because agents started coming and I would say, are you crazy? Like, please do not entrust your real estate career with me. I'm in a freaking hotel room. Are you nuts? Like we are really not ready. But um, it was really fun. We've kind of joked just like, you know, I'd go down to the front desk and pay for a week and I'd be like, okay, we're in business for one more week. And um, we'd have the sales meetings like in this little room. And um, it was really fun. So we were there about six weeks. And again, we never told clients we would meet them at the restaurant and be like, oh, yes, we would like to help you and assist in the sale of your home. Never letting them know like, oh, yes, and we've been in business for a week here. But um, it was really fun. 
And then after that, we had a small space, which was actually next door. There's an office building we really liked. And um, so, and it just started growing. So that's how it started. That's awesome. So tell me about the the brokerage today. What What's like kind of the makeup of that? What's that look like? Yeah, so we have um, three or uh, two offices and then one is sort of a training space and a video studio. Um, we have 175 agents um, and it's just been really good. We always say like, we don't want to be the biggest. It's like biggest isn't the best, like biggest, biggest and better, better is better. So we always make sure are we growing the way we want? And do we still love coming to work every day? And a lot of that's just kind of defining core values and hiring and firing based on core values. That's good. Yeah, I, I like that. So, okay, so you're 175 agents. That's not a small brokerage, especially for an independent. That's not small by any means. Um, was there a certain turning point where you noticed that you guys really started to take off with that growth of of adding agents to, to, to the brokerage? Um, you know, I would say it, like everything, it comes in phases. So when we first started, there were people who were interested in what we're doing and they wanted to check us out. And I feel really fortunate, um, you know, some good leaders joined quickly. And I think that gave us a lot of validity. Um, But also then I think at year three, then we had another bump. And I know there were people who were interested in what we were doing, but they were like, you know what, let me wait and see. (laughs) Oh yeah, (laughs) for sure. Give me a couple of years. So after about year three, then I felt like we had another level of credibility and some people who were sort of watching from the sidelines decided to join. Um, So now, you know, we just keep kind of clarifying the vision and where we're going. And then, you know, recruiting is always a part of any brokerage, but we call it selection because I really feel like talk to everybody and then you're sifting and sorting to see who's a good fit that who can you really help and who will also be, you know, an asset and in alignment with what you're trying to do. So I think in a weird way, like we still want to grow. My goal would be to have four offices in St. Louis, probably have a hundred people in each office. Um, But we let people go. We, um, you know, we're very careful on the initial 75% of new agents get out of the business. So we do work with new agents, but we set the bar pretty high because we just really want them to have a realistic expectation and to succeed. So anyway, I don't know. (laughs) Well, you know, you just, you said something that just sparked a lesson that, that I had. Um, I always say I grew up at, at Keller Williams, you know, I was there for the first 11 years of my career as well. And, um, you know, Gary, I, I was in Gary, Gary Keller's I had, I was able to spend a lot of time with him uh, during that time. And one of the things he taught me was, you know, they used to have this class called recruit select. And, yeah. um, I think a, a lot of people tend to kind of get in, we all do, like we all get into our own version of whatever it is we think we're doing. Right. But but one thing he, I remember him saying to me one time was like the recruit select is about recruiting people to a process and then, and then eliminating them. So you select the right, the right fit. And so I think oftentimes in our industry, probably all industries, if I'm being honest, you know, we can tend to go into recruit mode and forget about the select part of that whole process. Right. And so that's definitely a big, big piece of it. So I, I love that you're really clear on that. Um, let, let me ask you this, Jill, like, so how would an agent know, like, who is your ideal agent? Like, do you have a description of that person or how would someone know if they're in your area of like, Hey, this is probably a good brokerage. Like I should probably interview with them or, or the type of person or agent that you would like to, to talk to about, uh, your brokerage. I'm just, I'm curious about that. Yeah. So, um, okay, quick one. One thing is, so our unofficial motto is love, service, and fun. And love is unconditional positive regard. So we expect our agents to have unconditional positive regard for their clients, make sure that they're doing what's in the best interest of their client. Service is solving problems and fun is fun. So that's going to start there. I will be honest, like sometimes I'll sit with an agent and they're like, okay, that's fine, but it's fluff. And what's your <laughs> split? I want the cheapest split. That's awesome, but that's probably not a great fit for us. Yeah. Um, So encompassed in that, I mean, we also want the staff to treat agents with love, service, and fun, and the agents to treat the staff that way. I mean, it makes a nice, you know, common, um, like rules of engagement almost of like, this is how we're going to roll and it it works well. Um, So I think people who really are committed to doing a great job for their clients, it's definitely not transactional. It's... um, you know, being the trusted advisor and that you're going to be there before, during, and after the sale. So people who are community-minded, who really want to do this at a high level, who want to have depth in their knowledge, so they're committed to excellence, um, and they're nice. Yeah. Um, Because we let some people go last during, you know, 
last year and they were big producers, but they were so hard on our team. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, it's okay, but we all get to choose and they'll be yeah. happy somewhere else. And the staff is relieved. And I'd even encourage client uh, agents, look at your clients. You have some clients that they trust you, you can serve them on a high level. And then there are others that no matter what happens, it's just not a fit. And if you can help them find another agent, it's all good. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Um, there's, you know, you've, we've got to be, we've got to be a fit or we can't work together. It's just, it's just the way it goes. Um, I love that too. And especially when, when you're talking about like a, you've said the word community a few times, I know that's important to you. And especially when you've got like a, a community that has a certain sort of culture and feel to it and sort of like you mentioned rules of engagement. Sometimes there's there, I, I believe in a such thing as addition by subtraction. And some, sometimes we get better by, by, by the people we, we move away from. And that could be clients, that could be other agents and brokers, et cetera. So I love that you're really clear on that. So speaking of community, community, when you, you know, when we initially connected on this, um, part of it was everything that happened, you know, in the last almost year now with COVID and it's just forced, it's forced, it's for so much change on so many people in our industry. Um, and I know that you, you know, you, you, rose to that challenge. So, I mean, I, I'd love to kind of to talk about that and how, number one, how, how COVID-19 like affected your community of agents and, or in, and if that trickles out further into to your clients, I would love to hear about that too. And, and kind of what you did about it. So, you know, I remember almost a year ago, like in March, when we started, you know, sheltering in place in the lockdown, and how much fear? I mean, I had a lot of fear. I think all of us were watching like, what's going to happen. So yeah. um, I really believe people need in a leader, like a certain feeling of safety and some certainty, even in uncertain times. So one of the first things we did as a staff, so, you know, on Zoom, but just some really honest conversations and problem solving. So kind of like, okay, what does it look like? And I think we were thinking like three to six months. What's it look like in three months if we weathered the storm? And what's the um, risk if we don't, and what do we need to do? So everybody could kind of talk about the staff and things we need to, you know, and part of it was we need to reach out to our agents. We need to provide all information that we can as far as, um, you know, can you be in the office? How do you do it? How do you work with clients? And then the marketing department had a big part of that of like, how do we communicate this to agents and to their clients and just create an atmosphere of safety and like, we're with you. Like communication should dial up 10 times because people need it. And again, we talked to our agents about this too. Like we didn't know for sure, would we be able to go out and sell? Would we be able, you know, what are we doing? But we said, forget everything else. Just call your clients and don't talk about real estate. Just say, how's it going? That's all you need to do because that's what people need the most right now. So kind of circle the wagons, make sure everybody feels like they are connected and heard and then make sure your agents are, that you're doing it for your agents, but your agents are doing it for their clients. You know what's fun? So funny. So my business partner Fred and I—that was that was our exact same salute. Like we just were talking, and it was obviously it, it was the "What do we do?" conversation because no one knows what was about to happen. Nobody knew it was gonna, you know. And so we came up with the same thing for our team, and we just said, "Hey, we're, let's call this something three to th we called it three to thrive." And we just encouraged everybody call three of their clients every day, and just go, "Hey, how's it going? Are you are you safe?" Are you, um, we said safe and sane. That was our script. Are, are you, are you staying safe? Are you staying sane? Is there anything I can do for you? Here was the really cool, cool thing that came out of it for us. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be really curious if you experienced anything uh, similar. Our agents and ourselves, because Fred and I did it too, got as much or more out of it than our clients. And everybody was so happy to hear for, like, those were the best connections ever and, you know, and what's funny is it just brought so much more business because of course it like was like throwing gasoline on the fire of our sphere of influence plan that we've been working on so hard for the last couple of years. It, that was like the gasoline on the fire for that. But most importantly, from a mental standpoint of where the world was, you know, March of 2020, it was like, so, it was so good. And our agents would thank us constantly, like when we'd be doing our Zoom follow-ups and sharing, it was like, it was, I talked to so-and-so and it was so nice to talk to them. And, you know, it was so great. So I love that you did that. Did you guys have similar experiences hearing from your agents? 
Yeah, we did. And again, I think sometimes in the beginning, agents were reluctant. Like, what do I say? Or what's going to happen? Do they want to list their house or should they pull it off? And I said, don't even worry. I mean, right now it's just that connection, just that you're there and they'll know that they can talk to you and you're there. So, you know, when you said that comment about, what did you say? Like simplify to multiply? I said th three to thrive. So we called oh, okay. said oh. something about like, Oh, addition by subtraction. Addition by subtraction that. Yeah. And uh, so the phrase that's on my, like my mantra for this year is simplify to amplify. And then oh. I think that's what COVID did. Like get rid of everything that's non-essential. What's truly important. And I really think it's those relationships. It's, you know, get rid of the things that are really taxing and not producing a lot for you, whether that's tough clients or tough agents and what's important. So, you know, there's a lesson and a gift in everything if we can see it. And I don't think that, you know, 2020 wasn't a good year and, you know, many, I mean, a lot of loss in 2020. And there's some gifts of what's really important. What do we truly value and where should we put our time? Yeah, gosh, that's so true. You know, and I was, so the last event I went to, that I physically went to that was a lot of people. It was in Mexico last is either late January or early February. I forget what it was. And you, there was a, one of the keynote speakers that was basically, I mean, he, he just kept talking about simplifying, shrinking down the circle and getting more out of basically going deeper instead of wider. And it was just such a timely message. And um, I remember that he just hated me like a ton of bricks and, I was there for like three days and I felt like I got my money's worth in 30 minutes, you know, that type of deal. So I, I love that too. Yeah. So, so, okay. So that was step one is like, you okay. So you guys start making the phone calls and sort of reaching out. Mm -hmm. um, how did you, I mean, cause when you're, you said two locations, I mean, you've got 175 agents. That's, that's a lot. Um, it's a big community. What, like, what else did you do to sort of help keep that together? Because I know, um, you know, some companies are, were set up for this, like they could, they could handle it. Others, not so much. And it was really tough and, and really they haven't really turned, turned, even turned the ship yet, you know, almost a year later. So how did you not only survive this, but kind of make things better? So I, I was like envious when you said you had been doing video for since 2009, I think we were not really doing video. So it was a new thing, but again, you know, a gift out of COVID. So quickly, you know, everything went on Zoom. And one thing we started doing as a leadership team, every day at nine o'clock, we'd do like a motivational minute because again, it was just mindset. And um, we came up with a concept, we called it Lead, Connect, Grow. And I can send you this if you want to see it later, as far as like, we just had a little um, like list of what we were encouraging our agents to do. So it was everything yeah. from make five phone calls. It can be to your family members, to your clients, to your friends, just connect, um, you know, write two handwritten notes then move your body, go for a walk. Like just, if you're gonna watch the news, make sure you balance it out with something positive, either a podcast or reading something positive, like watch your mental diet at this time. So every day at nine o'clock, somebody would be on just to talk about what's going on and kind of, you know, and people tuned in. We put it on our private Facebook group and it was just for Red Key agents and people would jump in and share and they felt so connected. So then we started opening it up on Fridays. It's open mic day and agents do it. And it's been awesome. I thought we'd probably do it for a month or two, but it's still been going on since then. And I don't know if we'll ever stop because you feel connected. Um, and then I love seeing the agents do it. And again, with 175 agents, not everybody knows each other. So they get to know each other. And just that kind of openness, vulnerability sharing has been an awesome thing. That is so cool. And yes, I would love it if you would send me that. Um, Send, send me that and I'll make sure that anybody who listens can get it out of the show notes or, or anything all like that too. Um, that's wonderful. So I love that. So what, so that obviously had a big, um, I had to have had a, you know, obviously big impact. You thought you're gonna do it for a month and here you are almost a year later still doing that. Um, what, like, what are, what are some other things that you're doing? Maybe more from like, because, you know, some of the, some of the listeners of the show are, are agents and, you know, they're maybe, earlier in their career, but there's a lot of other ones that are agents that maybe are grow. They have a larger team like I do, or like you, they own a brokerage and they're, you know, they're running that and they're, they're curious about how do they, you know, keep turning their ship and make sure they're, they're going the right direction. Like what's, what else have you done in the last year? Or so that's just really worked for you or that you would say, Hey, th these are the types of things I, that I'm passionate about that I believe make an impact. Yeah. So again, 
you know, same thing we teach our agents, but like pop by gifts. So think about your team. How can you reach out? You can send them a card with a Starbucks gift card or a gift. Um, I was also really tried to be very intentional on, you know, it might be a Friday afternoon text. Great job. Thank you for all your help this week. Like we need to connect. We need to reach out and kind of like make deposits in their emotional bank account more than maybe normal because we all need it. We're missing that kind of interaction where we might see them in person. So we have to dial it up. Um, so we always do a holiday party and it's usually like we get to do an activity and we have dinner together. The staff couldn't do it this year. And I kept trying to be creative. Like we'll get a giant room and everyone will sit 10 feet away. We'll sit 12 feet away. Yeah, we'll, we'll double social distance. Yeah, and then they shut down the restaurants again. So I'm like, okay. So I didn't mention this, but one of our core values is fun and a little quirky. So it's like, you know, we're inclusive. It's not cookie cutter, like fun and quirky is sort of accepted. I love that. So we, I just found a place and I could order like meals for four. And I just told everyone show up just curbside at the office. And um, my COO is like very analytical and serious, but I made him dress up like an elf and I, <laughs> <laughs> he hated it. Love that. And, uh, and on a costume with a Christmas tree. And they came by. So we just gave them meals to take home to eat with their family. We gave them, you know, um, AirPods and a bonus check. And just like, but it was so funny. Like we could have mailed them, but it was just them coming and seeing us and everybody felt happy. Like we so much them. better. Yeah. That's so much better. I love that. And with agents, we usually do an awards banquet and it's usually like a big thing, um, a breakfast. Can't do it. So we did it all on Zoom and we did some pre-recorded videos like for the people who are winning awards and just kind of people we were highlighting and kind of a look back at 2020, a look forward at 2021. But we did an agent pop by. So I had the staff, we came up with a gift and then each staff member would take like, you know, 10 or 15 to deliver. So they all got it on the same day. So again, don't always think about what's most efficient. Think about what's really most effective because efficient was we could mail it, but everybody will get it different days. And what if they don't get it? What if it gets lost? Um, so in it, it was kind of the winter warm up because again, I was trying to think, okay, how sad, like it's, you know, January in St. Louis and we're watching a zoom call on, you know, for our awards banquet. So we got a like snuggly blanket and it had a red key little logo on it. And then we had like coffee and biscotti and all these things. Oh, and a candle that we had made. But it was like, hey, we know it's really cold outside, but we just want you to know we appreciate you. And we, you know, make some coffee, have some biscotti, and then just feel like wrapped in support and know we miss you guys and we appreciate you guys. So then each staff took it to their, um, to the agent's house, snapped a quick picture and just let them know. And it was a cold, rainy day. And the response was great. And it really wasn't our intention, but we got so much um, from the agents of so much appreciation and a lot of stuff on Facebook. And again, it wasn't like a really expensive thing, but agents just keep talking about it, that it just felt like the perfect winter thing and the surprise element of it. And I'll even say like, I think a few people on the staff were like, really, it's raining and it's cold. Do I have to drive all over and do this? And they got back and they were so happy. They were, so it was so worth it. Yeah. We're getting so many like positive things from the agents. And, you know, if you're feeling sort of down, like do something nice, <clears throat> do like, a random act of kindness and you feel much better. So it was just funny watching the staff come back and everybody was all excited because maybe they had seen agents or somehow they had interacted. Yeah, that's so awesome. I'm not surprised to hear that. Um, okay, so we're, we're coming up on time, but I wanna, so I wanna ask you this. So here we are, we're recording this. It's, you know, early February, 2021. Mm -hmm. What's, you know, what are your major, you know, what's your, I don't wanna say goals, goals focus like what are you excited about for 2021 and um and i'd like to just kind of chat about that for a minute um okay, so a project i have and again with covid i had these projects on the back burner and then i was like should i do them or not but one was we are opening a new office it's bigger um but i just have been thinking why will people come back to the office will they come back to the office what will work what won't work so we are taking a restaurant space so it's freestanding and it's come becoming our new office. So it'll open in the spring, but I think it's gonna be great. It has a bar. So it will be, you know, a cappuccino bar in the morning. Um, if they wanna have cocktails after, you know, we'll see how that goes. Um, it's a cool room, like with the stone and fireplace that will become kind of a lounge and training room. There's two outdoor patios. So we're gonna put white lights and table and chairs out there. So again, no matter what happens with COVID, if we have a problem again, people can sit out in the spring and work outside. So having lots of little, independent spaces where you can close the door, 
but having a great like community center to come to, you can entertain your clients, you could have a class and then, you know, entertain them in one of the spaces. So I think it, maybe my theme is community, but things change, but the need stays the same. So we just figure it out, whether it's, you know, virtual or dropping off gifts or finding safe spaces we can come together. Yeah. It, I mean, it really is. You know, you said something that sparked something my, my, my coach said to me, I don't, I don't know, four, four or five months ago. And it's funny. It's more relevant now than ever. And while we were talking about listings, it's the same, but it's, it's what you said about the agents um, that sparked this is, you know, in our, so in our market, we're down to, I don't know, two, two and a half weeks worth of listing inventory. I mean, it's, this is the craziest seller's market I've ever been a part of. And I believe that we've ever had in the Phoenix area. And uh, he said, you know, you really, I don't care what you have to do to get listings, what the idea is. He's like, you have to start, you know, you guys got to do things that, that don't scale. Like it doesn't matter if it scales or not. Yeah. Cause, because in the, we've always like, how do we do something, but then, then we can scale it as opposed to just do that doesn't matter right now. Right. And I think the same thing when you start talking about that, human when when that is like the scarcest resource and we need that is and that is most valuable the connection piece right or in in the case the conversation i was having with my coach listings um you do things that's who cares if it scales do it just just do it because it's the scarcest thing and you've got to do what you got to do to make that happen um and I've, i think that's so true whether you're running a team or brokerage I do the same thing um i believe same values you know for uh, with your, the way you treat your sphere of influence is this way, same way for your, for your top agents. If you run a brokerage or run a team or both, you know, it's, just, it's again, it all, I think it all comes down to connection and, and that word that you've used a few times community. So. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I, to me, it's like, it's the most efficient thing is how it's going to scale, but the most effective might be that very rare commodity of that connection and relationship. Yeah. Effective. Uh, I'll take effective over efficient all day long. Right. Um, every single day of the week. Efficient's great. I love efficiency. I love things that I love press button and, and it repeats it, you know, who doesn't? And um, it's not always effective. And sometimes it's never, you know, it's not personal. And, and so I love that you, you're, you weren't afraid to, to make that, you know, to make that happen, which is tough. You know, I mean, you're, when you own a brokerage, you've got, that's, those are tough decisions to make, especially in, in uncertain times. So I'm yeah, glad so that you've done that. I have three spaces with very few people in them. So what, yeah. <laughs> but it's going to be okay. It's going to, we'll be back. So it's all good. I love that too. We, so in our building, you know, same thing. We've, we have fewer people here every day now than we ever have, but we're also selling more real estate than we ever have. And I'm just like, I don't care guys. They do what you want. You're all responsible. You show up on zoom for the meetings anyways. So even when you're here, you're downstairs, we're upstairs, like it doesn't even matter. So you, everyone, we're all adults. Let's take care of ourselves and we can connect. And um, yeah, it's totally okay. Well, so in winding down, let me ask you this question. What, should, what didn't I ask you? What should I have asked you? What should we talk about before we go? What are you, your passion? Like if we hang up and you go, man, I didn't get to talk about this. You're, you know, what's that thing? Okay. Um, it's a core value, but it's, we are honey bankers. So I would say, the thing, anything you need in real estate, if you just um, watch the Honey Badger video, but they yes. are relentlessly focused on solutions. Every real estate deal, there's going to be a problem or, you know, instead of just giving up, you say, huh, there's probably two or three possible solutions. So keep going like the Honey Badger. I love that. It's funny enough. I'm part of a little community of, of realtors within our brokerage called the Honey Badgers because oh. God, it's the same thing. So then when, as soon as you said that, I, I got a good chuckle. Well, um, Jill, if someone wants to connect with you, whether that's social or whatever, what's the best way for someone to kind of maybe, maybe they want to reach out or maybe they just kind of watch your journey. What's the best way to people for people to find you? Probably and this sounds so like boring, but just go to um, redkeystlouis.com and leave Red. me a message, our website, redkey, um, St. S. T. Lewis, redkeystlouis.com. Awesome. Redkeystlouis.com. We'll make sure that gets in the show notes. And um, Jill, I really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you for being a guest on our podcast. And uh, maybe we can do this again sometime soon. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks guys for listening. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week.